Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to have a lesson on shakers, all kinds of shakers. So you see here on this table, I have many types of shakers. We have some metal shakers. We have a kibasa, which is a kind of shaker. We have bead shakers. We have straw shakers, woven shakers. We have plastic shakers. We have wooden shakers. We have maracas, which is another kind of shaker. And we have kashishi, which is a woven African kind of shaker. So we'll be getting to all of these in different segments. This will be a long video, so strap in. Okay, so we'll start with the kabasa because it's different from all of the other shakers, but it can be shaken but it can also be scraped like this. All right, can also be shaken. You can even shake two together. So a kibasa is a pretty awesome instrument and I believe it was influenced by the shakare, which is a large gourd with beads around it. We'll do a separate video on that because that's a massive subject. So if you take it apart, you see that it's hollow inside, but these beads go around. Now, when you first get a kibasa, it's going to be pretty tight, especially uh, if it's an LP kibasa. So what you're going to want to do is take these off and stretch them, okay? You won't break them, don't worry. But just take your time and stretch them out. The other alternative is to play it for about a year and wait for it to loosen up. But when it's tight, there's certain things you can't do with it, which I'll show you. And the bottom is just this handle with a double-ended nut. So you can tighten that within the kibasa if it comes loose. So it's a very simple instrument, but ingenious. So we'll tighten that back up. Again, if it comes loose, you can tighten that nut back up. So you see, this is a, an older LP kibasa, a Fuchi kibasa is what they call it. And it's very loose. So these backwards rolls, you can't do that with a kibasa that's too tight. And the way you do that is you bring your hand up and turn it really quickly and then bring it down and let gravity do its work. The trick is not to get too much of a sound going up. See that sound I got? We don't want that. That was a good one. So that's called a slide or a roll. It's usually notated in a kibasa part uh, as a roll. Okay, you can also do that, but normally it's a slide. So practice that a lot. It's very tricky, actually. So if you, again, if you bring your hand up like this, straight, and then quickly turn it and bring it down. And you can avoid a backstroke by turning it, by not turning it too early, like that. And then to work it into your grooves, so what I'm doing there is um, getting my hand to start it, backhanding it, and then moving my wrist. And then the free throw, like that, you're just throwing it up and you're not using your left hand to turn it. Okay, so that's how you do a roll on these. Now I have several different kinds of kibasas. I have a smaller one. This is a newer one. So I just uh, kind of worked on it, broke it in. And when you play it uh, like this, you can do that two ways. You can use your wrist to move it or your hand to move it. Or you can do both. So.
Okay, that's a little harder. So this is just wrist. This is just hand. This is both. And that enables you to do some accents in there. Okay, I have a really tiny one here. That's great for recording. It's not really loud enough to do anything live. And then I also have a Rhythm Tech one, which has a different kind of handle. So, and it's also a little darker. So it's not, I don't think this is as good an instrument as the LPs, personally. You can also put a kibasa in a mounting device where you can mount this on a cymbal stand. And it's made for this, um, this kibasa, the uh, medium one. So when it's mounted, you can then play it, you know, with one hand. You could also use it for the big ones, but it barely fits. But it will hold them, but you can't really play it in there. Um, and I'm not sure they make one for the big one. They might, but I, this is the only one I own. And I do use it. I have used it. Okay, so LP makes these. There's also uh, a Rhythm Tech mounted kibasa that you can put on your drum set or anything. Your percussion setup like this just goes on a cymbal stand. And you can play it like that. To me, this is... I bought it and I tried to use it on a gig and it... It just wasn't so great because that's pretty much all you could do with it. Again, it's not bad at all, and I have used it before, but for me, it's easier to do these turns, at least for single notes, okay? So both of them would be a good idea to have just in case you have to play all kinds of things. Uh, with one hand and then play something else with your other hand. Very useful. So that's kibasas. Okay, so we'll clear these real quick. Okay, so let's talk about the shaker motion. And we'll use this metal rhythm tech shaker for a minute. And then what I'll do is I'll clear everything out and then we'll just do all the different kinds of shakers. So the main motion for playing a shaker is this. So you use your arm to move the shaker. You can also move your wrist like this for softer passages with smaller shakers. But it is important to get that arm motion. So without the shaker, it looks like that. So it's forwards, backwards, and then higher and lower. So high, backwards, low, backwards. High, backwards, low, backwards. So it looks like this. Now, the slower the tempo, the more distinct that shaker has to be. One of the hardest things to do is play sl uh, shaker slow. So. Uh, you don't know how many times I've heard um, uh, comments when I play these Broadway shows that come into town. Apparently, uh, people cannot play shaker because the first thing the drummer says to me after we've played for a while and we take a break, he, he'll say, not not talk about anything else, timpani playing, mala playing, nothing. He'll say, great shaker playing, because that's all they care about, because it's a rhythm thing. And that's really common. So you really need to learn how to play shaker well and in time, because you're playing with a drummer. And if, if he or she are playing with hi-hat stuff and, and uh, symbols and all that on 16ths, and you are too, and you're not right with that, there's going to be trouble. Also have to remember, a lot of these shows are on a click, and we're using AVM monitors, uh, so headphones with a click, so it's got to be just perfect. So it's so, so important to be able to play at all tempos uh, shaker, and it's the most common thing in every show 
almost every show, except if you're playing like Sound of Music or South Pacific, you'll be playing some shaker, anything modern. Okay, so once again, let's go over that. So it's forward, backwards, forward, backwards, and then up, backwards, down, backwards. So if you want to start out, you start out like this. And just get it really even. Now you can control the throw of the beads or whatever is in there, some sort of shot by just using your wrist. And that's how we get accents with our wrist. Okay, you can also use your shoulder when you want to play fast. Okay, but it is important to stay relaxed. You don't want to be really tight, otherwise you're going to get tired. Remember, you're going to be playing this thing sometimes four or five minutes at a time, so you got to build up your endurance. So let's try to that with a lighter shaker. Uh, let's try this plastic shaker. These are common. This is an LP shaker that's pretty cool. You can take it apart, okay? So this is very light now. Now I can use my wrist because it's about a quarter as or less, maybe an eighth, as light as this metal shaker. So all right. So if we put them together, I really like this concept. Whoever thought of it should um, be given a raise. Although getting them back together can be a little difficult. So now listen. Now sometimes you have to swing the shaker, so... And again, that all depends on the motion of your hand. So you can get that triplet, you know, feel if you're moving your hand like that, okay? And your forearm. If you want to move your wrist like that for softer playing. Now there I'm going like this. Much, much more difficult. So that's a little more advanced, okay? But you hear the sound between the metal shaker and the plastic shaker. Also, there are wood shakers like this. Uh, these tend to be much more quiet. I would not use these in a live setting. I use them in the studio, though, quite often. And I have so many shakers because I do a ton of recording. and. Uh, there is a shaker or a perfect shaker for every tune. So I might use seven or eight different shakers on a, on a whole CD's worth of, uh, of tunes, okay? We also have some straw shakers, woven shakers. And they can be played also like this. So these are uh, kind of like gonzas, which is a Brazilian shaker. Um, you, they use this kind of thing, but it's more closely related to these, which are kashishi. So these are African shakers that are woven, but they have a hard bottom and some sort of, uh, could be corn, could be uh, some sort of bean inside.
All right, so there I was playing like a nine you go, six eight rhythm, two against three polyrhythms. And you can always use two hands when you're playing shakers. So in other words, if I want to beef that up, I can do this. So you can play in unison or you can play opposite. And then you can mix and mac match any of these shakers. I mean, you know, the sky's the limit. Okay, but you need to work on that with your left hand, which is pretty tricky. So I'm going to clear some of this stuff out and we'll start talking about all the different kinds of metal, plastic, shakers, and then we're going to talk about maracas, which is really cool. Okay, so I'll be right back. So here we have a variety of plastic shakers. I have uh, many more, but these are the ones I use most often in the studio and live. The most common one that I reach for is this Rhythm Tech Studio Shaker. I really like this shaker. It's a nice size. It's, an, um, it's not an offensive sound. It's kind of in the middle. So, okay, and most uh, important, they're all exactly the same. So, if you lose one, you buy you can buy another one and it'll be just like it. Also, it's nice to have two of the same shaker if you want to use. Uh, both hands for more sound. All right, so that's my go to mid middle of the road shaker. Then there's these lighter shakers, they're very, very common, these LPs. These are great when you're right up on a microphone and uh, you want to be able to play really soft. So these only go past a certain volume. They do not get very loud. This is the loudest they get. So you can use a full motion and not worry about being too loud. You can also separate them into uh, just one shaker. They're also great for playing fast. All right, they're really light. I love these, so these are great. And then I already showed you this one. I'm a big fan of this. This is relatively new. That's got a really pleasing kind of sandpaper kind of sound. Then we have these fruit shakers. I'm sure, I'm sure you guys have seen these. They're, they're in all kinds of, uh, I think there's an apple, a tomato, and they're actually pretty good. So this is the lemon, I guess. And this is the orange. I find that the lemon and the orange together sound good. Or. All right, so these are these are good. These, these are my favorites of that series. Then we have some box shakers. Uh, you can play these like this. Or like this. So these are cool because they have a really nice um, uh, throw off. In other words, the beads keep going. So they're kind of wet sounding.
So really cool. And these are great for recording. Okay. I have this Brazilian shaker here. Uh, this is actually from Brazil. It's a uh, Torelli, I believe. I really love the shaker. It's, it's well balanced. I use this a lot when I play drum set and on, uh, I go on like some maybe piano trio gigs and I'll use this in one hand, you know, and I'll play, you know, with my left hand with a stick, cross rim, whatever. It's just beautiful. It's nice and light and it's kind of cool looking too. Blue's my favorite color. So. Then we have some novelty shakers like these uh, Kunga shakers. So <laughs> they're shaped like a Kunga. So. And I use these quite often too. I, I like the way they sound. They sound different here than here. And so this one's actually lower, which is cool. All right. So uh, they're different pitches, but they're the same shaker. Finally, well, we do have this novelty skull shaker. Just thought that was fun. I don't know if you can hear that. Good for Halloween though. And finally we have a drum set hi-hat shaker which is really neat. This is called a hat shake. Um, not sure who makes it but I bought this because uh, I thought it'd be good for a tune I was doing with with uh, for recording and it worked out great. So actually when you, I don't have a hi-hat here, but when you play it on the hi-hat it Each time you open the hi-hat, it does that. So I was playing clave with my left foot on the hi-hat and using this, and it really came out great. So that's that. So we'll, uh, we'll reset, and we'll do metal shakers next. So here are some metal shakers, several kinds. Uh, again, these are ones that I use very, uh, very much on sessions and live performances. So I already showed you this metal shaker. There's a little larger version of it that's called um, Live. Now they're both like that, but they're different sizes. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm not sure they still make them in different sizes, but I love both of these. One is a little brighter. So that's the brighter one. And together they sound fantastic. All right, a lot of power. So when you need to really cut through, this is your ticket right here, these two. Also, you can roll with these. So, so if you're stereo mic, it sounds really cool in the studio if you do. Get the Doppler effect there, okay? <laughs> Good. These metal ones are called Gonzas. These are Brazilian. Uh, this is another Torelli shaker. I like the shaker a lot. It's got a nice little ring to it. Uh, metal shakers will do that. Since they're metal, they'll have some, uh, some more liveliness to them, some more snap. And sometimes they ring. So you can hear that, how that's doing that there. And then this is a pair of smaller ones. So you see there how my left hand is playing rhythms under the right hand with this. And it sounds good with metal shakers because they ring a lot. Okay. Then we have this. This is very common. Not my favorite shaker. It's a Wiro shaker. So you actually scrape it. It's like a multi-purpose instrument. Uh, but it is heavy. Uh, so it cuts through. For me, this is a very secure shaker. In other words, it's so heavy that it just makes you relax. 
so you ha in order to play it, you have to relax, especially fast. All right, but it is the heaviest of all the shakers I own. I'm not sure they still make these, but I believe that LP made this shaker. Okay. All right, now we have some Wawa shakers. Wawa shakers are shakers that you change the pitch uh, when you move your hand on top of it, see? So like this. And these two are different. They're called wah-wah shakers because they resemble kind of a guitar wah-wah pedal that does that. You know, if you ever listen to any disco, you're, you've heard that. So these are really cool sounding in the studio. Uh, live, you don't necessarily get that wah-wah effect unless you're mic'd pretty heavily. My favorite wah-wah shaker is this. I call this the Pac-Man shaker. I got this from my buddy Barry at Drummer's World all these years ago. I have no idea who makes it. I thought it might be Pete Engelhart because it's metal, but check this out. It's a little weird to play because you're squeezing as you're playing, so it takes some practice. You could also play it like this. It's almost like a backwards recording that way. All right, but I call it the Pac-Man shaker because it looks like the Pac-Man thing chasing. Okay, anyway, it's a lot of fun. Now we come to uh, what I think is one of the greatest percussion inventions of the last 30 years, the one-shot shakers. So these are just amazing. And again, whoever invented them deserves a big raise. This is all the types that you can get. I think they're all still made, but I'm not sure because I've had these for a long time. These are uh, the basic shakers. Now what, what happens on these, they have a little thumb print where you put your thumb and you can only get one shot with them. When you come back, there's nothing, which is not great for everything, but incredible for other things, which means you could play complex rhythms. All right, you cannot do that with a regular shaker. Then they get bigger from there, except for these little finger shot shakers, which are made to put, uh, be put on your fingers when you play bongos. Uh, I've used them. They're kind of uncomfortable. It's, an, it's a good idea, but, you know, they tend to fly off. So, but uh, it's pretty cool. I haven't used these as much. So then we get to the bigger ones. The next one is this... Um, one shot shaker that's like kind of medium size and it's a much lower pitch but louder so okay and then we have the studio version which are really loud now i'm not sure why they call them um the studio oh no i'm wrong these are the live ones. I stand corrected. Maybe these are the studio ones. I don't know. I'm dreaming these days. So <laughs> they should be called live because they're so loud. All right. And these are the best ones, I think. 
because they're so loud and you can be heard over anything and you don't need to be mic'd. So I would definitely suggest if you're going to get just two sets, get these and then get these. Okay, so these are great in the studio for playing light when you're mic'd. These are great live, all right? And they're really, really nice when you just have to do. So if you try to do that on a regular shaker, what happens is this. So you get that back tap. It's really hard. Now you could always tap a shaker like this. But then, of course, you're getting the sound of the shaker. You can try that with all kinds of things. That's a little better. But really, to be honest, nothing beats this. Okay, so I think every percussionist needs to have uh, at least one set of one-shot shakers, if possible, all of them. Uh, it would help you get out of almost any shaker jam. So next we'll go on and do some uh, ethnic shakers, some straw shakers. Be right back. So here we have some ethnic shakers. Some are woven, uh, some are gourds with beads, some are just solid, and some are just just basically beads, okay? <laughs> so, uh, we're going to talk about some of these. There's different families of these things, but the first one is this gourd with the beads over it. It's kind of a mini shekere. If any of you know what a shekere is, it's a gourd with beads used a lot in Cuba for, for Wawanko and Bata, different, different things. So, this particular thing here is great for just individual notes. But you can use it as a shaker. And to roll, I like the little hair, haircut there, okay? So useful. All right. So, then we have our kashishi. These are African uh, shakers. And again, like I said in the beginning, they have a hard bottom there. So you play them. All right, so these are really, really cool. Um, and then we have some smaller ones. And even smaller ones. I played these earlier for you. All right, so these are very dry. So those are called kashishi, all right? And they're, they're extremely common. Even in Brazil, when you play Birnbau, you're using one kashishi in the hand that's doing the striking, okay, of the bow, so. All right, and then we also have some uh, shakers here that uh, I kind of made from these little woven baskets, so. And this is great for studio recording. Then, of course, we have the eggs. Now, these eggs are different, though. These are made um, of, it's kind of a small little coconut material. And so these sound much more mellow than regular eggs. So these are really nice, and they're nice 
right up on a microphone. And then we have some other ethnic shakers that are made from bamboo. And these actually look louder than they are. And then we all have our, we have our straw shakers that I played for you earlier. I have two of those though. There's always a delay when you go from front to back. So good. And then a little wooden shaker here, which is real nice. So that's a lot more grainy than let's say a plastic shaker. It's a nice uh, timbre to use. Then we have our bead shakers. So these uh, I call bead shakers because it's got these wooden beads on there. And I use two at a time. And they're really nice for recording as well, not so much for live stuff. And then we have some shakers. I call these shakers because I do use them as shakers, but some people call these hooves or cocoons. All right. They're basically used like that a lot, but also you can play them as shakers. All right, so there's lots of these available. I think I got these at some um, some thrift store somewhere. And then we have some small ones you can wear on your on your wrist or on your ankles when you're playing and hold them, you know. As you're playing with something else too. So these are really nice. All right, so that's the uh, ethnic shakers. Um, we know we have the kashishi, we have the ganza, the um, woven ganzas. Oh, before I leave, I, I showed you these in another video, but they're so cool I had to bring them back. These are these pearl, uh, they call them tang tangs, and they're, they're wooden rattles. But they have a shaker in there. And so, just a great idea all around. You can even play them like this. So I love these. These are my new favorite toy for recording. All right, so we'll clear this out and then we'll do some maracas. So here are some maracas, several sets. Uh, the best maracas are made in Venezuela, in my opinion, uh, by a guy, guy named Tapa. Uh, that's his last name. And I got several sets from my buddy Barry in New York back in the uh, 90s and the 2000s. So I'll play a little for you so you can hear what they sound like. All right, I am not a very good Morocco player, uh, but again, look at those videos, it'll blow you away. So these are so great because they speak so fast. And you see there, you use a lot of fingers, kind of like drumming, right? You can roll like this or like that. 
or just singles. Okay, and you can play them like a shaker. That's a triple stroke. That's common. You hear those players do that a lot. So I have several sets of these. I have a little set that I really like. And then I have a larger set that are even better. All right. Uh, I did lend a uh, set to a student once, and they busted one. They dropped it. So after you break one, this is what it sounds like. Dead. Here's the other one. So the moral of the story is don't lend good instruments to students. Uh, I glued it best I could, but it's pretty much shot. So. And these were great, but I did get a replacement set, so I'm happy again. I also have some other uh, LP maracas that aren't that bad. Here's these. So you always want to practice uh, two ways, playing down so you can get one shot and just rest the beads on the bottom of the maraca. You also want to practice like this. You can also use two sets for a big sound like this. You just cross them. Okay, we have some little tiny plastic ones. These are really kind of cute. And these are LPs. And then we have some tourist maracas. These are the kinds you get in like Nicaragua. Not very good, but good for recording. It's just a different sound. And I like these a lot. Someone got me these, and I don't know where they're from. There's no label on them, but they're really pretty. All right, they have a really beautiful, gentle sound for studio recording. Then there's these. Got these at a toy store. Pretty funny. And then finally, some American Indian maracas. Okay, these are just for, for studio recording. So, uh, one thing to practice, uh, you can do taps. That's a very legitimate way of playing a maraca. Or, like I said before, you can just use your fingers. So one thing you can do is just take some rhythms uh, even rhythms from my book and just play now there's a high maraca and a low maraca you can play either one in either hand normally I'll play the high one in my strong hand you don't have to do that uh, different people do different things but that's what I, I do so again those rhythms so you see how I'm using my fingers there now, if you have a part that says maracas, but it's super articulate, you can always use one-shot shakers. They work great, all right? And then also practice them uh, like a shaker. Now, one thing with maracas, you can play real fast because you have that stick there.
So you see there, I'm doing this kind of motion. It's almost like the Muller technique on maracas, okay? So. And then triple stroke roll is this. So there's three on each hand. So you can do different polyrhythms, different combinations of that. And I've seen lots of uh, really great maraca players do that. And then the rolls, like I said, are this or this or just a straight. Okay, so again, I'm not an authority on maracas, but I do play them quite often. I definitely suggest you check out some of those videos. Uh, uh, there's some really good ones on YouTube. I'll try to um, attach some in my, um, in my intro to this video. So I hope you enjoyed all this uh, shaker stuff, and I hope it enlightened your world so you can uh, see what's out there. I definitely suggest just getting one or two shakers and just start working on it. It's very tricky. Um, it's one of the hardest things to do and not many percussionists can do it well. There's so much for us to do and learn how to play. That's one of the things that you should put at the top of your list.